I think it's about time that I test out my 24 volt lithium ion battery pack that supposedly has 35 amp hours of capacity in it and see actually does it actually have 35 amp hours of capacity. I'll be using my IMAX B6 the discharge feature of it to, to discharge it and while it's discharging it'll be counting on how many milliamp hours of capacity it has. Right now the battery is at 25.27 volts that means that, that each cell since it's six cells in the series is at 4.21 volts that's perfect that that's that's a little bit higher than i would ever go usually i only go to like 4.05 or 4.1 because i like to undercharge these that way they last longer but for the sake of this i want to see how much can i get out of it it's already set to 18 volts so and it's going to be pulling one amp of current which that's not exactly right because functionally my bike would pull like 20 amps at max so I'd get a lot less range, but oh well, one amp would be good, at least for the test. The voltage is already going down, as you can see. Slowly though, so that's not bad. And we're already getting a result. It's used up 18 milliamp hours of electricity, and it's turned it into heat with its internal heating coil, and then it's dispersed it with the fins on the outside of the IMAX V6. Only issue is this this battery is at the highest voltage this charger will accept, so it's having to limit how, how fast it discharges it, otherwise it would burn up its internal heating coil. So since it's only discharging at 0.2 of an amp instead of the full amp I set it at, it's going to take up to a week, or actually probably more than a week, to conclude this test. Oh well. So this experiment took five and a half days for the test to conclude, and the voltage has gone down to 20.5 volts. That's a lot lower than I would ever let it get in normal day-to-day -day use. But I want to know how much I can get out of this. So it was worth it for this test. So the results are in. The battery only has 24 amp hours of capacity. I was hoping for 36, but is evidently each cell only had two amp hours of capacity each. So 24 is still plenty of range for my bike. It's about 60 miles. But now the big question is, did the cells get out of balance from that full discharge? Let's balance charge it and find out. So I've hooked up the balance leads and I'll be powering it with a computer power supply. Let's turn it on. So now we're going to be charging at 2 amps. There it's charging. Oh my, the voltages are different. That's that is a shame. But I could always up I could always change that later on. Very easily actually. So it looks like this battery pack does have some issues with each parallel pack being slightly different capacity. Which I knew this would happen, but it's not all that bad for slight discharges like I do. I only discharge like 30% on an average bike ride. But for something like this it's very noticeable. And if it ever does become an, an actual difficult issue what I can do is for instance if this row of cells is a, a lot less than this row of cells well then I can just find how much difference like for instance if it's if it's only 1.2 amp hours difference well then I would take a, uh, an older cell that happens to only be 1.2 amp hours and I would just hook it to it so now it's exactly the same capacity because that's the good thing that's the good thing about using duct tape to build my battery is I can always just rip it apart and redesign it anytime I want. It's very easy to, to desolder all the cells. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about this battery pack and its discharge test. I'll be going back through and correcting the amp hours on my videos because like for instance a lot of my older videos I said how to build a 35 amp hour battery pack but turns out to be 24 amp hours so I'll go fix that. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!